to you, amen, as we get ready to dive into the word of God that she hears from the spirit of the Lord and give her opportunity at this time that you would come forth and just bless us with what God is saying at this time, amen. Amen. Sister Paula, amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. If it wasn't for God, we'd all just be sitting in a building wondering what in the world is going on and what are we doing here. But I know why I'm here. Do you know why you're here this morning? Amen. Amen. I love that song. I don't know what you came to do. Because <laughs> I know what I came to do this morning. I came to bless and give honor to the name of the Most High God. The one and only true living God. Yes. Not a dead God, but a living God. Oh, Amen. 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 I'm going to ask you to take a moment for prayer with me. Father God, we just lift up, glorify, and magnify your marvelous name, Lord God. For truly, truly, as we live and breathe, Lord God, there is none like you, Lord God. None can compare, Lord God. For there is no other, Lord God, who is as marvelous and wonderful and, and gracious as you, Lord God. And Father, as you sit high and look low this morning, Lord God, Father, we ask that you would just have mercy on your servant this morning, Lord God, as I take a moment, Lord God, to try to prick the hearts and the minds of your people, Lord God. Father, but I know that it's not I, Lord God, but you who moves in me and through me, Lord God. Father, I step out of your way this morning, and I ask that the words that, Lord God, come forth, Lord God, that they would be your words, that you would move by your spirit, Lord God. And Father, I pray that every mind would be alert, Lord God, that every heart would be receptive, Lord God, that there would be focus, Lord God, in the minds of your people, Lord God, as we come forth, Lord God, to feast upon your word, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for appetizers, Lord God, as we prepare ourselves for the meat of the word. We thank you, Lord God, for this and all things and for each and every person that has shown up this morning, Lord God, because they know why they're here this morning, this Lord God. And we thank you for each and every one, and we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to warn you in advance. I'm going to try to be quick, but I'm a thorough person, so if Pastor starts giving me that, I'm going to try to cut it, because <laughs> God knows I'm a yacker. But I want to speak to you this morning about moving forward. The Lord, Pastor Pat had allowed me to listen to a song and, he, and it's by Israel Houghton and he began to speak of moving forward and it was something that the Lord had been speaking to me for months and you know how we are, we're like you want me to do what? I, I'm walking, I think I'm moving forward, you know, one step, one foot in front of the other, we think that we're moving. And the Lord began to reveal to me that although I was moving, I wasn't moving forward. It's one thing to move and to go in circles. It's one thing to move and like they teach you in the army, run in a zigzag pattern because they can't hit you. But how many of you know that once the enemy knows your pattern, he'll hit you every time? Moving forward is not just so that you're not still in the place where you were and you know, you're like, ooh, I'm past that, I made it through, and God's going, no. <laughs> you just ducked under the radar for a moment because the enemy still knows your pattern. You have to move forward. Move forward in your mindset. Move forward in your emotions. Move forward in the way that you do things. Move forward and shake off the past. Because although you're moving, your past has got you around the ankles, and for every step that you take forward, he pulls you five steps backwards. And you're wondering why you keep seeing the same scenery with different colors. And he said, just like the seasons outside, the seasons change in the spirit. But the question is, are you moving from season to season, or are the seasons just passing you? And that hurt a little bit. Because I thought, you know how we get sometimes, we get prideful and I'm like, well Lord, I was just asked to be in leadership. I had to have some kind of growth. And he said, what's that mean? <laughs> yeah, you were asked to be in leadership and yeah, my hand is in that. But you can't be a leader if you're far behind the people. So you can't lead those who are in front of you. You have to lead those who are behind you. 
And if you're behind and they're ahead because they're allowing things to drop off of them and they're allowing the seasons to change within them as well as outside and around them, how can you lead? That's good, that's good. And I, again, I said, ouch. <laughs> and I said, well, Lord, how do you begin to move forward? And he said, to be able to move forward, you do have to take that one step back and stand in your past for a brief moment. Because until you step back into your past and you deal with your past, you can't go forward without it. People always told me, forget about your past. It's in the past. Don't worry about it. If you are upset about it, don't talk to me about it because when you talk about your past, it hurts me. And I used to think, well, <laughs> if you think it hurts you, <laughs> what do you think it's doing to me? You know, because as Christians sometimes, we kind of don't want to deal with the pain because we've been taught to fake it till we make it. Never let them see you sweat. And in my household, crying was a no-no. And when God began to say, you're going to have to weep this one through, I was like, what you talking about? I don't cry because I was always the kind of person that unless you hit me, I wasn't crying, and if you hit me to make me cry, you better run, because I was going to make you cry a whole lot more. But God said, it's not about trying to be the tough guy, because sometimes to be tough, you have to be vulnerable and weak. And we've been reading this book, I told Pastor, I hate that book. <laughs> <laughs> the Purpose Driven Life. I was like, you know what, I think I liked it better before I realized that I had a purpose and all this stuff had to fall off because it's not like it's falling off, but it's like the Holy Spirit's going, <laughs> not needed. <laughs> and you know, when the Holy Spirit starts pulling things out, he's not pulling them off your back, he's going deep in your heart and going, <laughs> not needed. And it made me cry. And it made me realize that I have to be vulnerable. And for me, because I can only speak from my experience, when I came to this ministry, I was tough. I learned that I could be a little bit vulnerable around my pastors, and I was like, okay, you know. I love Pastor Patricia, before, but before she was my pastor, she was my girl, the other half of PNP. Because her name was Patricia and my name was Paula, and we were friends. And I was like, well, you know, I trust her as a friend, I could be vulnerable. And then God said, well, what you going to do about Pastor Walt? I said, well, I'm going to go through to him through Pastor Pat. And he said, no, that's not going to work. That's not moving forward. That's still trying to hold on to those insecurities and that can't be vulnerable stage. And I was like, man. So then I had to let Pastor Walt in. And how many of you know that when you open up the door, Everybody tries to come running in. And don't you know he brought all these people in here to me and they all ran in the door. And I was like, dang it. I almost had it open a crack and I could shut the door, but everybody ran in. And I had to learn to be able to move forward meant going back and shaking off the things that people had done to me. Not just shaking it off, but allowing forgiveness to come into my heart, true forgiveness. Because to move forward, you have to go back and you have to forgive. But forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for your own benefit. Because I didn't realize that for every step I took, it was like three balls and chains on my ankle. And I thought that I was running, but I was just dragging my feet. And no wonder the enemy could keep catching me because I was leaving a trail for real. Deep, deep, deep in the ground. And God says, you're not meant to be tethered to the earth, but you're meant to soar with the eagles. On, and you can't even begin to flap your wings because you've allowed unforgiveness to chain you up like this. Unforgiveness brings bitterness. Bitterness hardens your heart. When you have a cold and frigid heart, it's hard for anybody to get close enough to love you enough to thaw it out. And when I came to this ministry with these wonderful people, they're so loving, and I'm not saying that because they're sitting here because I'm not that nice. 